Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, my, uh, my name is Max Chechel. I'm a backend engineer in uh, Juno. And before we start, uh, first of all, I want to tell you that on my Twitter, there is a, this presentation published already. There will be some code. And if you want to just like see the code, just like go download it and you can uh, look at it from your laptops. Also, we have uh, a ticket to Skolkovo High Load Conference for the best question. So prepare your question, and hopefully some of you will get this ticket. Uh, so let's start. Uh, as many of you might know already that we generate uh, lots of code in Juno. Uh, we generate uh, clients for our microservices. We generate validators for incoming requests. We instrument our da database code with uh, prepared statements. Uh, we generate test stops uh, and uh, many other things. Uh, but today I want to talk about something different. I want to talk about uh, the code that we implement over and over again uh, and violating the dry principle. Uh, let's start with some basics. Uh, when we instrument our code, we typically uh, talking about decorator or uh, middleware pattern. Uh, the decorator takes some uh, function type or an interface and return a function with the same signature or uh, an implementation of the same interface, uh, but instrumented with additional features. We have many decorators for standard interfaces, like interfaces from IO package or interfaces uh, defined in, in HTTP package. And the keyword here is standard. Let's look at some examples. On this slide, we can see two variables. Variable R, which is an uh, IO reader, and uh, variable W, which is an uh, IO writer. Uh, and here, uh, Buff IO uh, new reader is simply a, a decorator. It takes an interface and returns us an implementation of the same interface, but instrumented uh, with buffering. We also can see that there is a zip new writer, and it's also a decorator. It takes writer interface and returns us a writer interface instrumented with compression. And the same with uh, IoT Reader. Uh, as I said, we also have many decorators for the HTTP handlers. For example, uh, Gorilla Handlers package offers some uh, useful middleware, middleware like logging handler uh, to log your request in Apache common log format, or uh, compress handler that will compress the response to the client if the client uh, sent us a uh, corresponding accept header uh, HTTP, uh, accept and encoding HTTP he uh, header, and so on. There are like many other useful middleware in this package. We also have decorators for HTTP round tripper interface, uh, which is used in HTTP client. For example, there is a nice package that uh, provides some tripperware, as author calls it. There is tripperware for logging, tracing, retries, and metrics. In Juno, we have our own middleware for the HTTP round tripper interface that we use literally uh, for every integration with any uh, third-party service. It's really nice to have uh, all this middleware for standard interfaces, but the problem is that most of interfaces we work with are unique, like the one uh, in the example. Uh, and we define these interfaces in our code. I doubt that any of us ever written the exactly same interface. And there is definitely no middleware that we can share with each other. So can we actually solve this problem and have reusable decorators for uh, every interface? 
and the answer, uh, and the answer is yes. Uh, the problem can be solved with uh, code generation. We can write a tool that uh, parses source code, finds the interface uh, we want to decorate, and generate a decorator for this interface instrumented with uh, some uh, desired functionality. We actually developed a couple of tools in Juno. One tool is uh, TraceGen, uh, which generates decorators uh, instrumented with uh, open tracing spans. And another tool is MetricsGen, which generates decorators instrumented with uh, Prometheus metrics and, uh, and provides a summary of uh, interfaces, uh, uh, methods, execution uh, time. These are nice tools and they work well. Uh, but the problem is uh, metrics and tracing are not the only kinds of decorators we want to have. Uh, if we talk about microservices, uh, then uh, distributed tracing and metrics is a must if you want to have a full picture of what's going on uh, in your production system. Uh, we, often, uh, we often need to retry uh, requests to some unreliable third-party services. Sometimes for such systems, we need circuit breakers. So we can give a third-party system a break if it goes down under, for example, our heavy load. Sometimes we need pools of clients, uh, for example, to distribute the load to several DB replicas that we have. Uh, sometimes we need fallbacks. The awful truth is that we need these things, or at least one thing, for every, for like literally every service we write. Uh, but we like to pretend that our infrastructure is like 100% reliable, that all third party system systems we integrate with have uh, zero latency and never fail. Uh, sometimes we put some third party system down and we say like, ha ha ha, look at these guys, they're like down again. <laughs> Uh, but on the back of uh, our minds, we understand that it would be nice to have tracing, it would be nice to have metrics, it would be nice to have retries, but there is never time for that because there, is always, there, there are always more important tasks to do. Let's look at some examples starting from the, uh, starting from the simplest one. Here you can see a decorator code for the I.O. read writer interface. And here you can clearly see why uh, writing such uh, decorators is really boring task. Because actually like the only difference here is the method name. So there is read and write method. When you extend your interface, for example, add a new method to interface, then you have to go to every decorator that you already implemented for this interface and repeat yourself again. So you have to write the same kind of method again. And when you find yourself in this situation, you just like uh, take a mug from your table and uh, go have some coffee or go play ping, ping pong or like choose any other form of uh, procrastination. So now imagine that you have to do the same procedure for let's say five interfaces where each interface has four methods. Then you need to write same code 20 times. If you want to use three decorators, then you have to write this code 60 times. And repeat yourself 60 times, it's, it's not fun. Uh, now let's look at more complicated example. So let's say we have Google Distance Matrix API to uh, get the nearest uh, driver in terms of estimated time of arrival. And we use OSRM API as a fallback. So we always run request to Google first. And if this request hits some latency threshold, then we run OSRM API and wait for whatever response come, comes first. In this case, uh, Google respond, responded first, so we have to cancel the request to SRM and free da uh, database resources. 
On this slide, you can see that after Google hit latency threshold, we ran OSRM, and OSRM is, uh, responded first. And we used this response to show it to the client. Sometimes both of the systems fail. So Google returned us an error, OSRM returned us an error, and we want to have combined errors from these two services to put it to our logs. So here's, ex here's an example of such interface. It gives us best estimated time of arrival. Uh, it takes context, it takes uh, passenger position and few driver's positions and returns us uh, best time of arrival. Here is the decorator code for that. It's kind of complicated code. So we run every implementation of the client in the go routine. Then we use the response from this implementation and pass it to the channel. Then we wait for this response to come from this channel. And if it's a successful, successful response, then we just return, return it as a result. Also, once we return from this function, we cancel the context we defined here. So whatever system is the last, uh, the request to the system will be canceled. And hopefully we don't even have to pay money for Google, for example, in this case. So while it might be fun to write such code, because it has like almost all Go, almost all Go features, right? We have Go routines, we have channels, we have deferred functions calls, we have context cancellation. So it's actually like interesting task to, to make. But if you need to do it like multiple times, you can end up with a buggy code. Like if you're implementing this kind of algorithm from scratch every time, it's really easy to get a buggy code. Even if you're copy pasting and adapting it for the new, uh, uh, for, for, for some other interface, you can end up with a buggy code. So wouldn't it be nice to have someone who write this kind of code for you? Well, actually uh, the code you saw in the examples I shown was automatically generated. And it was generated uh, with a GoWrap tool using fallback and retry templates. I mentioned trace gen and matrix gen tools on one of the previous slides. Once again, these are good tools, uh, but each perform only one task. Uh, so I quickly realized that uh, we simply unable to write tool for every repetitive pattern in our code. So I just decided to develop a generic solution to this problem. So what GoWrap does, it parses the source code finds the interface declaration that you uh, need to decorate and wraps each method uh, found in the source code with the GoWrap method type. And this type has few uh, useful helpers. The, these helpers are really useful uh, within the templates. And these helpers are enough actually to generate all the examples I just shown to you. All the decorators I just shown to you. Here's, the, here's an example of the template. Uh, it's the first part of the uh, retry template. So we uh, declare a decorator struct here. We decorate constructor for the struct. Notice that we just embed the uh, source interface type into the struct. And we do this because uh, we actually need to perform retries only for the methods that return errors. Otherwise, we don't know if we should perform retry or not. So we can check if method returns an error, then we, that, then we override it. And here's the uh, template code. Also, we can check if method accepts context. And if it does, we generate select statement. So. Uh, you exit 
uh, from the function as soon as the context is canceled. Now let's look at some uh, generated code. Here we can see uh, go generate command in the generated file. It placed here to for you to be able to regenerate the decorators just uh, by typing uh, go generate command. So you don't have even to remember how you initially uh, called the go wrap. You just uh, go to the shell and type go generate. And it's enough for you to regenerate all the decorators code. If you, for example, change the interface, uh, add few methods, remove few methods, change methods, signatures, or names, you just type go generate and it will uh, regenerate all the code for you. If you run this command, go up first will look for the Prometheus template on your current working directory. And in this case, there wasn't uh, such file. So it went to the project's GitHub repo, found the Prometheus template, and took a permanent link to the specific ver version of the template. So you can have a reproducible code uh, generation procedure. So even if the Prometheus template change over time, you'll have code generated with the same, same template. And you, you won't see any diffs uh, when you run uh, go generate. What else can it generate? Uh, well, we already talked about fallback and retries, retry patterns, but it also has, it also can generate some uh, pools. It can generate circuit breaker, open tracing, spans, and uh, Prometheus metrics. So let's uh, just briefly walk through this list. Like, uh, there are template for a round robin pool. It basically an, a, a slice of the implementations of the same interface. And this decorator just simply takes uh, for every method call one implementation after another. And it's really useful, for example, for uh, pools of connections, like for pools of uh, DB connections. If, if you have, for example, several replicas, you can use this uh, decorator. Another decorator is a uh, sync pool decorator. It exclusively takes some implementation from the pool, executes some method on it, and puts it back to the pool. So it can be useful for, uh, not only for uh, distributing the load, it can be useful also for uh, protecting an, implementa an implementations from concurrent use can be useful, for example, for uh, buffer your writer, uh, net con interfaces, and so on. Circuit breaker. Sometimes uh, we make requests to some third party services, and these third, third party services, uh, for some reason, uh, return us some errors. Uh, in this case, we don't want to make more load to the uh, th uh, third party service. We just want to give it a break for some period of time and then continue to uh, use this service again. Uh, so here's the state machine of the circuit breaker. The picture is taken from Mart Martin Fowler's site, so all credits goes, go to Mart Martin Fowler. And circuit breaker can be in three states. It can be in the closed state, uh, closed state means that the electric circuit is closed and everything is fine. All requests, uh, all method calls that, uh, all calls that <laughs> you perform to such decorator in the closed state uh, go to original interface that you're wrapping. So if you have, if you hit some uh, threshold in this uh, in the case of the template that I wrote it's uh, the number of consecutive errors so if you have like for example five errors in a row the circuit breaker opens the circuit 
And in this state, every method called to the uh, interface decorated with the cir circuit breaker will end up with the circuit open error. So we don't delegate the call to the original interface and third party service. We just like immediately respond with error. Circuit is open. So you don't make any more load to the uh, third party system. And once reset timeout is expired, so uh, we open circuit for some reset timeout of time. And once it's expired, we give it one more try. So if this first try after reset timeout end up with success, we close the circuit and start passing all the requests to uh, a third, a third party system. If this uh, try is failed, then we open the circuit again and wait for reset timeout of, of time. So the, it's, it's simple algorithm. Here is the implementation of the circuit breaker. So we can see if the circuit is open and the reset timeout is not expired. We just like immediately respond, respond with the error. And in other case, we just uh, delegate the method call to original interface implementation. And if returns us an error, we uh, increase the number of consecutive errors. And if returns uh, no error, we, act we actually just uh, exit with the result that we just got. Open tracing decorator. So here's, a, here's an implementation of uh, code generated uh, with open tracing template. And you can see that we instrument uh, our spans with uh, open tracing, uh, uh, instrument our context with open tracing spans. And if method returns an error, we also mark the span uh, with the error flag and also logging the error. So as a result, you can, like we use uh, a Jagger in Juno to collect uh, spans. So as a result, you can see uh, a bars that represent the amount of time that was taken by, in this case, uh, DB methods that we instrumented with uh, uh, open tracing. Prometheus decorator. Prometheus instruments our code with uh, Prometheus metrics. Uh, in this case, it provides us a summary of the method's execution time and also labels the uh, every execution with the result, whether it's OK or an error. So you can see, actually, this kind of picture in your Grafana. Uh, so we collect metrics with uh, Prometheus. And then use Grafana to display nice looking charts showing us what's going on in your system. It's about observability and operability that Lena was talking in her speech. So I encourage you to stop repeating yourself. Use code generation tool that will raise your effectiveness as a, pro as a developer to a new level. And also, if you didn't find the template that you need contribute. Also, I would like to hear about some repetitive patterns in your code, and maybe I'll do a template for you. That's it. Maybe you have some questions. Hello, thank you for your talk. Very useful util, in my opinion. I have one question. For example, if you, if we have one repo with, uh, mm, we called to third party systems, and now we need to implement retries on it. Uh, how can I parameterize a uh, template for two kind of this call? For example, for one, we need just repeat every second. Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah, I got the question. Well, actually, initially, I had slide about it, but I wasn't just sure that I <laughs> made it on time. So the way you do it is uh, separate, split your interface onto smaller interfaces, decorate them separately, and then combine them again to 
the new implementation that will implement uh, the source interface, but with uh, different methods instrumented differently. So this is the way you can do it. Hello, thank you for your talk. Uh, how do you test the uh, code in uh, your templates? I tested the tool. <laughs> I didn't test templates yet, but actually I was thinking about like testing the templates. I, I, I'm thinking about uh, like test package that will contain the, some interface that has some method that return errors, some methods that have, have context. And I want to generate the decorators with every template that, that is in the repo and then uh, test, the, test the code using all these uh, generated decorators. For example, for races and so on, as you, uh, as you saw, the code is kind of complicated. So actually, I'm not even sure that there are no bugs. <laughs> so if you, if you like to just take a look at it, maybe you'll find some bugs, or maybe you have some ideas what templates to add to the repo. Uh, I have a question about um, the dead code. So if you generate 60 different methods with four different interfaces, mm -hmm. three methods mm -hmm. each, it's very cool in terms of after complete you have uh, lots of stuff that you could do with your interfaces, but uh, I'm thinking, well, if I have a file with 16 different methods, it's, it's just a dead code, I'm using only one. Okay, I limit to one template, mm -hmm. but it's still 20 different yeah, methods. There, yeah, there can be such problem, but uh, it's actually the question that was asked previously. Like in this case, you can just like uh, split the interfaces to the methods that you actually want to uh, decorate and then just like combine them back into like big yeah so when in go generate you just limit to one method which you want yeah 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 but like usually i think like in most cases in most cases for example pools uh, definitely is like one method decorator but like usually you for example want to have metrics for everything or like uh tracing for everything like uh, the reason i asked the question mm -hmm. because it's hard to, to use this Go generate stuff for me. I don't. I I hate it. But uh -huh. I would. Do, I love the, uh -huh. for example, the JSON to Go approach. Uh -huh. So what if we just put the same templates on the web page? I put. I copy paste the interface on the web page. Choose the stuff. The basically the tracing or pinger uh -huh. or round uh -huh. robin uh -huh. and it generates me uh -huh. the boilerplate for my interface and, I and copy then you back. just copy paste it yeah, co copy copy paste it back into my hood and i don't yeah, have to inter no 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 but then but then i'll just tell you but then you for example introduce a new method or you change the interface for some reason you have to go to some third party service again paste some code take some code back put it to your code it's like it's just like routine work and um, this thing you can do only once and then just like run go generate without going anywhere. So, well, maybe, I mean, your approach is also, I yeah. I don't change yeah. interfaces too often. That's why I just saw this solution. Maybe, yeah. Thank you for the talk. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is that uh, almost all the examples, uh, you generate something and use it like a whole. So you don't modify anything inside. And very often we need to generate something and there are some placeholders, you put some logics inside it. So the question is, if you ch change the template uh, mm -hmm. and so you can regenerate it and if you use it like a whole, you just, just regenerate, replace and that's all. But if you already modified it, do you have some ideas or examples how to merge it, not manually, but in automatic well, I, I'm, way? I'm not sure I got your question. <laughs> mm, uh, so can can so you repeat it again? Yeah, so uh, uh, your examples here mm -hmm. were like middleware, so you generate mm -hmm. it and you do not change anything manually inside. Uh, in the generated code? Yeah, yeah, yeah the so generated. Never, yeah, and yeah. then if you change the template, you mm -hmm. just need to generate it once again and mm -hmm. replace all the generated code and it yes. works. 
Yes. But if you need to generate something, and there are some placeholders hold where you put some logic manually, and uh, the regeneration with a change template doesn't work in this case because you need to merge and you do it manually. Yeah, so I, I, yeah. I like think I got your question, uh, 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 but the problem is that you just don't have to modify the generated code. Like, like what is the reason? Like this, de this decorator is like separate unit. If you want to some custom logic, you just like implement it in another decorator. Maybe the decorator you like write yourself, but there is definitely no need in modifying the generated code. Uh, well, at least I know. Well, actually, like in my experience, I never ever needed to uh, edit the generated code. Okay, so thanks. just like try to avoid it, <laughs> try to find the other solution. Well, my question is about automation of uh, uh, wrapping. Uh, a decorated interfaces into another decorated interfaces. Uh -huh. Is it automated? Can I uh, wrap no, no. multiple? I, I, if, if I got your question correctly, you're talking about that. I was talking about generating separate decorators. And yeah, you're talking yeah. about combining them into one Yes, decorator. I'm talking about combining several decorators. Well, it's actually like really complicated task. <laughs> Stas already asked me <laughs> about it. I all think about it, but like, at this point, it just seems that it's uh, too complicated to do it. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> I have uh, one more question about uh, groups of developer. Do you run Go Generate on the CI machine or not? Or you just? Well, uh, uh, the generated code is the code. So it has to be uh, committed to your VCS anyways. Uh, and the problem with the uh, generation on CI is that you never know what version of the tools are on the CI, you know. So it's better just like to generate it locally and on CI you just build your program and run, run tests. So right. as less as you, like, it's better not to mess with, with code generation on CI. But if we have group of developers and each developer has different templates, how we need, what's uh, the best version of template? So the thing is that if you generated your code once, let's uh, just back to the one of the slides here. So here, if you once generated the code, like in this case using the Prometheus template, it will place the link to the exactly same version. So you actually will get the reproducible result. Every developer will get reproducible result. But you might not want to depend on the some uh, external links, right? So for, uh, in order for, the, for this to work, you need internet connection. And in this case, what I would recommend is to uh, copy templates to your repository and use it locally. And in, if, you, if you do it, then you'll have uh, something like this. So every developer actually uh, will have the same template and you'll also get reproducible code. Actually, uh, it's, it's out of the scope <laughs> for today, but Go wrap has special command. So if you if you type like Go wrap template copy Prometheus, it will uh, and point it to some local file. It will copy the Prometheus template from the GitHub to the local file, and then you can use it and get your reproducible uh, code generation and reproducible builds. Okay, thank you. Well, anybody else? Okay. Max, now you have to choose favorite question. Uh, Who's the winner? Okay, I would give the ticket to this guy okay. <laughs> for the combined <laughs> uh, decorator. Congratulations. And the t-shirt, the t-shirt, the t-shirt. Uh, <laughs>
Okay. Well, I would give the T-shirt to Mstislav, but <laughs> I, I think, think he has think one. He, yeah, yeah he, he has few probably already. Um, um, okay, this guy about. Uh, 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 such a dilemma. I just take it with me. Okay. <laughs> well, congratulations to, to this guy who won the uh, oh. who won the ticket. You're lucky guy today. Yeah. Yeah, thank you all for coming. Okay, thank you yeah. so much. Thanks.